Hello there. So with the Beautylish sale coming up, I thought I would give you an update on the Wayne Goss eye brush set that I purchased back in November, I think it was, and let you know um, what I've thought about the brushes, how they've kind of bloomed after washing, and just in general giving a update. So if you're interested in getting these brushes and you wanted a more in-depth review, especially with someone who's used these for a good amount of time now, well, here you go. So let's go ahead and get out all the brushes. All right, so here are the brushes in the eye set that I purchased back in November. Um, they're all of Wayne Goss's new eye brushes. I believe he's calling this the first edition, um, which I actually find kind of confusing because he's definitely come out with a few um, eye brush sets before this. So I'm not quite sure how he landed on that naming. But um, I've been really enjoying this eye set and there's been a few surprises in what I have liked and found really good uses for and what I have not liked and what I end up not using very often. So I'm going to go ahead and just go in numerical order um, and I will probably be bringing in other brushes to compare with some of these. So starting with the E1 brush, this was the brush that I wasn't planning on purchasing, but I ended up getting because I just purchased the whole set. And I very much expected to try this out, not be able to find anything that I would use this for, and probably eventually declutter this brush. And I'm very pleased to say that I actually really like this brush now, which is nice because and I think I mentioned this in my original unboxing. This is an incredibly soft brush. It's really beautiful. And I mean, it is a very large brush for me. It's a very fluffy brush for, very large and fluffy brush for um, my eyes. Because I do have very small, uh, narrow, hooded eyes and they're kind of deep set. So something of the size is generally not something that I uh, can use comfortably. But I've been really pleased with this brush. And I think the reason that I learned how to use this brush was actually because of one of the brushes in Sonia G's Crane's Maquille set. So let me go ahead and get that one out. So this is the brush that I'm referring to, and I do kind of forget the name of this brush. Um, I think it might have been the Arched Worker because of this arched ferrule that it has. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful brush. And this was another one that I, I purchased the set because it only came in a set, and I expected to not like this brush. However, this makes a really wonderful brush for putting a very light amount of color all over my lids. And I've never really had a brush that I liked for that purpose. And I, I think part of the reason that I really like this brush for that is one, it's kind of on the thinner side and it has this way that it glides across my eyes that it doesn't tug or pull at anything. And it's very uniform in how it sits on my eyes. And I think it's to do with this arched ferrule because I was kind of trying to figure out like, you know, what's, what's the big deal with this arched ferrule. And I think what this helps do, at least on my eyes, is when I'm pulling this along on the surface of my eyelid, I feel like sometimes the middle of a brush like this either presses down more or it kind of collapses up. And this instead just kind of stays flat. And it just gives a very um, uniform look to whatever it's putting on my eyelid. And I was kind of surprised because this isn't the first kind of brush that I've had like this. This isn't the only brush I have in this kind of shape. My other brush that I had before both of these brushes was the Ruffer 33 brush. And as you can see, these are fairly comparable brushes. The Ruffer 33 is a bit more pointed, um, 
But I would say in terms of the like the bundling and the build and how thick these are, they're very similar. Obviously the rougher one is made from undyed goat hair and the Sonia G one is made from uh, squirrel hair. So the fibers are very different, but I do think that overall they're, they should be comparable. However, the way that the rougher glides across my eyes, it just doesn't give the same uniform deposit of color. It, it does something different, does something that I don't like as much. And it also presses down harder, or I have to press down harder. Maybe that's how it is. And because of that, it's less comfortable. And I don't think that the discomfort comes from the, uh, the fibers of the brush hair. I don't think it has to do with this being a goat hair and this one being a squirrel hair. I think it actually has to do with the ferrule, that this one is arched and this one is not. And so I don't need to press down very hard with this one in order to get a beautiful uniform deposit of color. Whereas with the rougher one, I think I actually have to press down harder in order to get that uniform deposit of color. So I think it actually has more to do with the bundling and the ferrule and maybe a few other things more than the uh the brush fibers because i do i feel like i always make a big deal about you know oh if something is made out of undyed goat hair versus dyed goat hair versus squirrel versus something else and i think sometimes i don't give enough credit to how much the bundling and the shape of something other than the actual brush head really factors into how you can use a brush and how it feels. Um, but anyway, I figured that these were the two brushes that reminded me the most of the Wayne Goss E1. And so I thought it was very interesting that the Ruffer 33 is just something that I end up not using at all and the Sonia G Arched Worker is something that I absolutely love. And I, I try not to use it very often because it is squirrel hair and I do have very oily eyelids and just oily face in general. So I don't wanna hurt the brush, but I very much prefer using this to using the rougher brush. And because of that, I was really surprised how much I liked the E1 once I kind of figured out how to use it from using the Arched Worker brush. Now I find that the E1 is surprisingly different from the Ruffer 33. And this is what really baffled me because um, the E1, the, the Wayne Goss brush, doesn't have an arched ferrule. So these are even more like one another than the Sonia G brush um, and the Ruffer 33, because these two both have the same kind of ferrule. And really the main differences between these two brushes are the Wayne Goss is more rounded at the top. And I think it has a, or actually I don't think that the bristles are that much shorter. But really it's just the shape of the top of the brush. The rougher has a more pointed, has a more pointed shape head on like this and a more tapered shape at the side. And the Wayne Goss brush is just a thicker, chunkier brush. So they are different in that way, but overall they're, they look like similar brushes, you know? And I was really surprised at how much more I like the Wayne Goss brush than the rougher brush. And here's why. The rougher brush, like I said before, I feel like I have to press down harder. And because of that, it's just, it creates a not so nice feel on my eyes. Whereas the Wayne Goss brush, I don't have to press down that hard. And I do think that the, the goat hair of the Wayne Goss is just softer than the rougher, but I can't really tell why that is. I don't know if it's like a better grade um, because 
I can't really tell the difference if I'm like kind of feeling the brush, like if I'm doing this between the two. Or actually, no, this is a little bit. This does feel a little bit stiffer. But I don't think it just has to do with the actual goat hair itself. I think it has to do with the bundling. Because even though the Wayne Goss brush is thicker, which is usually a, a bad thing for me, just because my eyes are small, they're narrow and all of that. But I think that because of this, because you have more of a gradient to the, um, to the taper, you just have more bristle in there. I think that makes for a softer, lighter touch. Whereas with the rougher, you just don't have as much bristle in there. And so for whatever reason, that translates to a less soft touch. So I'm still figuring out why exactly these are different, but that's the best theory that I have so far. But um, what this basically boils down to is, I really love these two brushes. I mean, mostly the Sonia G brush. This is kind of the one that taught me how to use this Wayne Goss brush but I don't like using the rougher one at all, really. Um, I will always pick up these two over this one. And I, I kind of just end up trying to find something to use this for, but I don't find myself being able to use it in the same way as these two brushes. These two brushes are just, um, when it comes to laying down a very nice light wash of color and a very, uniform fashion these two are really good at that and i do very much uh, like i prefer the sonia g but again this is a much more delicate fiber so i like having this as well also um this the e1 brush does have another use that i don't really use the sonia g arch worker for and that's for buffing because as much as i can lay down a really nice um, wash of color on my lids with this. I can also use it for buffing, similar in the way to how I use the Blender Pro, which is funny because these are kind of a different brush shape head on, but from the side, you can see these actually have a similar shape. Now, I don't think that the E1 is as versatile as the Blender Pro, at least for blending, because I kind of have to go in one direction with it but it's really nice to be able to put down a, a light wash of color and then really be able to blend out the edges of that if I want to go back and do that. It's nice to not have to pick up another brush for that. And I know in past videos, I've not been super happy with the Blender Pro. I have more recently come to appreciate the brush. I think before I had been trying to use it as a crease brush and it just doesn't work that well for me because it's too thick for that. Um, but as a blender brush to go and blend out edges, to be able to blend things together, oh, it is a great brush. And I really appreciate the E1 for kind of being a second blender pro when I need it. So I, I really like both of these brushes. So yeah, the E1 was kind of a surprise and a very happy one at that because I very much expected to just get rid of this at some point, and now I enjoy using this brush. Now, would I, you know, if, if I were to not have these, and if I were to go back in time and just buy individuals, would I purchase this? That's a good question. Um, and you know, I think I would. I think I would. I don't think that this would be like the first thing that I would purchase out of this set. But I do enjoy having this, and it is a very useful brush. And it has a couple of different functions that I enjoy using it for. So yeah, I think I actually would repurchase this. So I've been very happy with my experience of this brush. And in terms of um, blooming, I don't know if I've noticed that much of a difference from when I first got this brush. I think it's fluffed out a little bit, but not by a huge amount. It's still very... Um, sort of compact, but I like that. So this one didn't fluff out way, way, way too much. All right, so going on to the E2. So this and the E3, 
or the reason that I was interested in the set in the first place. Like I was interested in other things in the set, but the crease brushes are the main reason I was like, oh wow, I need to get these. And I am so happy that I picked up the E2. The E2 is out of this set. It is my favorite brush, it is my most used brush. As you can probably tell, it's very dirty, um, but I use this every day. This is one of my go-to brushes. And the reason that I like it so much is because it just fits in my crease very nicely, very comfortably. And this is one of the brushes that, um, I don't know if you can tell because it is just so dirty, um, but it has fluffed out a little bit. This brush was um, maybe a little bit, it felt a little bit more firm, a little bit more dense when I first got it. And then after the first wash, it fluffed up a bit. And I think that made it nicer for, um, I mean, it could still fit in my crease really nicely, but it does a better job of blending like blending out like the sides of what I put on um, on my eyes. So it's an overall really nice crease brush and it's something that I can really get into my crease. I can open up my eyes while I'm um, blending out color on my crease and it's, it's very comfortable and I really appreciate that. The only other brush I've been able to do that with is the Sony G original crease one. And I think in one of my original videos on these new Wayne Goss brushes, I did compare these two brushes together. And I was a little bit hesitant to do so because um, these are different brushes, they have different fibers. And I feel, especially for a crease brush on me, um, it's hard to compare squirrel with goat hair because that is probably the most sensitive part of my face. But I still do think that these, um, the E2 really reminds me of the original crease one. The way that this fits in my crease, the way that it um, deposits color and the way that it feels when I'm using it is very similar. Now the nice thing with the E2 is it is goat hair. So I do think that it has a little bit better of a blending ability, but surprisingly not by much. I think the crease one just, there's something magical about it, even though it has squirrel hairs, it it does a good job blending things out for me. But I think what I really love about the E2 and that the E2 is available is you can't get the crease one anymore. And I'm not sure if there's anything that I've ever tried or that I've seen someone else give a review on that reminds them of the crease one. So I find these to be pretty interchangeable. And because of that, I get a lot of use out of the E2 because I love how the crease one feels, but I do baby it a lot because one, it's squirrel hair, two, I can't get it anymore. And so I'm really happy that I've been able to find a goat hair brush that reminds me so much of this brush because that means I can just get a few of these and I can use these every day. So I've been really happy with the E2. And again, this is probably my favorite brush in the whole set. And out of the whole set, this is probably the brush that I would get a second one of. Um, and I will probably do that at some point. Now I need to do a separate video on this, but I did manage to get a few other crease brushes since my last video on crease brushes. Um, I can't remember if I had the goat hair crease one, but I did get that. And then I also got the Sonia G Crease Pro. Let me see if I can get all of these together in one hand because before the E2 came out, I was already looking for basically the goat hair version of the crease one. So I got the goat hair version of the crease one, thinking that it would be similar to the squirrel hair crease one, but it wasn't. This is actually um, very firm in a way that I don't like on my crease. I can see why some people might like it and prefer it because it can give you really good placement. Um, I'm sure this has great blending power, um, but I don't prefer to use it because it's just a little bit too stiff on my eyes. Um, and then the Crease Pro, I do appreciate, I do like this. I don't find it to be particularly similar to the Squirrel Hair Crease one. So very happy that I was able to get the E2 and it reminds me so much of the Squirrel Hair Crease one. So again, probably my favorite brush out of the set. 
and I'll probably get another one or at least another one at some point. Now, um, so this was another surprise in this set was the E3. Because I, like I said before, the E2 and the E3 are the reason that I was interested in these brushes in the first place. And this one I actually don't love as much as I thought I would. And I think part of the reason, or maybe most of the reason, is unlike the E2, the E3 really doesn't fluff out as much. And it was a more dense brush to begin with. And for me, what that translates to is it just doesn't really um, compress that much when I put it into my crease. It's just uncomfortable to use. And in fact, what this, what this reminds me of is the Goat Hair Crease One from Sonia G. These two have a very similar stiffness to them. And really the main difference between them um, in my opinion, in my usage, is the crease one just doesn't have as tapered of a tip as the E3. But the rest of the body of the brush is very similar. And they actually feel very similar in my eyes, even though the crease one actually has a smaller diameter than the crease or the, the E3. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the E3. Um, or the crease one, the, the goat hair crease one. I don't really love either one of these. I find them to just be too stiff for what I want in the crease of my eye. I just find them to be kind of uncomfortable to use. That being said, um, the E3 in particular is, it's an interesting brush. And part of the reason that I'm not sure I would actually declutter it is it's a great brush for precision which is interesting given how large of a brush, how large of an eye brush it is, because this is actually much more precise than the E2. The E2, if I put something in my crease, I'm probably going to end up blending it out even if I don't really intend to. Whereas the E3, wherever I put wherever I place color in my crease, that's where it's going to stay. And I'm not sure if I want to give up having that in my collection because I think that's a really interesting property of a brush to have. But at the same time, I don't reach for it very often because it just isn't nearly as comfortable as the E2 or the squirrel hair crease one. So we shall see what I end up doing with the E3 but I was very surprised that I didn't love this as much as I thought I would. All right, so I guess this is something of a surprise as well. Um, this is the E4, this is the lay down brush. And I knew I needed one of these in my collection, but I don't think I realized quite how much I needed one of these in my collection. And I have really enjoyed being able to have this. It's a really excellent lay down brush if you want a more uniform amount of color if you want it to be um, a bit more maybe a bit more opaque um, and have a bit more product laid down than say something like the E1. The E1 is going to lay things down in a much more um, in a much more sheer fashion and the lay down brush is very much for packing things on. I think Sonia G typically calls these kinds of brushes builders. Um, so it's a very good builder. And I do like it a lot for that. And actually, I did end up getting a Sonia G builder brush. So this came up on a secondhand site. This is the Builder 3. And I think that she has re released the Builder 3, her um, new line. I can't remember if it's in the fundamental or in the um, other one. But this is an interesting brush. I picked it up because I saw really good reviews for it. And I kind of wanted to compare it to the E4 and see, you know, which one do I like better? And it's funny. I, I mean, I think both of these are really good brushes, but the Builder 3 just, I don't like it as much. And I think, I think it's because it's a little bit wide and it, it's also very much like cut off at the, at the top. 
Whereas the Wayne Goss is just the perfect size and shape for being able to dab things anywhere on my eyelid in a very comfortable fashion. So I think just in terms of the shape, I just prefer the E4 a lot. And I find myself almost never reaching for the Builder 3. Now, where the Builder 3 does excel um, is in picking up uh, Pat McGrath's special shades. I do vastly prefer this kind of bristle for that as opposed to the um, undyed goat hair. But outside of Pat McGrath's special shades, I almost always gravitate towards the E4. Now, I don't know if I would pick up another E4 because, um, or well, I use it a lot, clearly. <laughs> um, so I might, maybe I will at some point because I do like this a lot. I think I would be more likely to try out Sonia G's uh, Builder Pro, but I do see a lot of mixed reviews on that one, and in particular in the mixed reviews is um, the actual shape of the brush. I think some people will say, and also they've put pictures on the site, that um, the brush is kind of shaped like this in that the top doesn't have any taper to it but the description of the product says the brush has a taper to it like the E4. So I go back and forth on that one, but I really do like having this brush in my collection. I like, it. I like having this kind of a brush in my collection. It's very useful, very versatile. I use it so much and I really enjoy it. So very happy I picked up this brush. This is one I might end up getting another one of in the future, but I kind of want to try out other kinds of lay down brushes as well. So the E5 is a, it's a pencil brush. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with this brush, but it's a, it's a pencil brush. <laughs> I find that it is Similar to Sonia G's, um, what is this, her Pencil Pro and then the Goat Hair Pencil one, I find that, you know, there's, there's differences in these, but there's just not enough of a difference for me to need another one in addition to these two other pencil brushes. So I kind of use all of these interchangeably. Um, I find that the E5 is probably closest to the goat hair um, pencil one. These two are about the same size and they kind of come to about the same point. I think it depends mostly on how I wash them and how they dry. Maybe the E5 is a little bit more pointed, um, but in application I don't find that there's really any difference. And the Pencil Pro is a little bit chonkier at the base, but I find that they come to about the same tip. So sometimes I feel like I just have three pencil brushes that are more or less the same. So not a bad brush in any way, but I think if you already have a pencil brush that you like, I imagine that this will probably be similar to them. I think what I really wanted from this, what I kind of hoped it would be, but I, I kind of already knew it wasn't going to be, um, was a really small pencil brush. And actually, here, this is what I wanted. What I wanted from the E5 is what Sony G's um, tiny pencil brush from the Maquille set gave me. And I really wish that Wayne would have come out with an itty bitty little pencil brush like this because man if I could have the goat hair version of this in this brush ooh, I would use it so often and it would be it would be something different in this set you know so I'm, I'm kind of sad that he didn't come out with that but I'm also not surprised um, because the tiny pencil brush is probably a lot less versatile than something of this size so I'm not surprised. I'm not disappointed by the brush. I'm not excited about it. Um, I don't know if I would end up decluttering this at some point. I imagine at some point I do need to go through my pencil brushes because I just don't use these as much. I mean, I mainly use these for inner corner highlight and I don't know if I need these three plus 
plus my two squirrel hair pencil brushes, plus my three smudger brushes, or four smudger brushes. It's just, it seems like a little overkill. So we'll see. I might end up decluttering one of these at some point, but honestly, I don't know which one I would get rid of. So it's a great pencil brush, but it is, um, it's just a pencil brush. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, so after washing, I didn't find that this brush did anything different. I didn't find that it really fluffed out. I didn't find that it compressed in any way. It was pretty much the same as when I first got it. And I would say the same thing for the E4 as well. I think the only brushes that really changed when I washed them were the E1 and the E2. Everything else kind of stayed the same. All right, so the E6. The E6, this was such a weird brush. And I will say out of all the brushes, I think this is the one that I was a bit disappointed with. And at the same time, I found a really fun use for this brush that I haven't been able to use any other brushes for. So let's start with the disappointing part of this brush. This brush is incredibly rough. And I think what really bothers me about that is in the description of this brush on the Beautylish website, it is described, actually, you know, let me bring up the website so I don't misquote this. All right, so quoting directly from the Beautylish website, um, this is described as having uncut goat hairs without blunt edges, ensure ultimate softness with a silk-like feel. There's nowhere in this description where this brush is called rough or gritty or coarse. I know Wayne in, in his video introducing these sets did say that this brush was coarse. I think that was the word that he used but it isn't anywhere in this Beautylish description. Ultimate softness with a silk-like feel is how this brush is described, and that is simply incorrect. Unless I somehow got a brush that is very different from what the brush is supposed to feel like, uh, but based on the reviews that I can see on Beautylish, I don't think that I got something different. This is a very rough brush, and I say that because I think a lot of people, myself included, were getting this as a replacement or an upgrade to the original 08 brush. And what makes the 08 brush so just beautiful is one, it's a tiny brush. I mean, this is incredibly tiny. Um, and two, it's very, very soft, which is really nice to have in a liner brush. And if you are expecting the E6 to have that softness, like the 08, I think you're gonna be really disappointed because unlike the 08, you cannot use this to go back and forth on your skin. Like the, the 08, you know, you can, you can use this whichever way, you can dot, you can brush this whichever way, and it's very soft. I mean, if you're like me, you'll probably end up poking yourself in the eye. Um, or well, I end up poking myself in the eye. But other than that, this is incredibly nice to use. It's very soft, um, you know, more or less foolproof. Not, not me proof, but more or less foolproof. This brush, on the other hand, the E6, all you can do with this brush is dot it like this. You can only use it as a push liner, and even using it as a push liner, you're going to feel a prickly sensation. Um, it's not soft. It's, uh, it's, it's very sturdy. <laughs> it's very stiff. And uh, you can feel the individual hairs, and you can kind of feel how they're poking you. You absolutely cannot use this brush like this on your lash line. It hurts if you do that. So it's not nearly as versatile as the 08 brush because of that. The 08 brush you can kind of use however you want and it's soft. The E6 brush on the other hand is just, if you don't use it in the right way, it hurts. As disappointed as I am in the E6 brush, it is a good brush in its own right. 
it's just not really comparable to the 08 brush. This is a really great brush for picking up um, creamier shades and in my particular usage, metallic shades. I find that the 08 brush, um, if you try to use it on a stiffer, creamier eyeshadow shade, it doesn't pick that up particularly well. This picks up lighter, um, like more powdery things or things like Pat McGrath special shades, things like that that are a little bit flaky, a little bit powdery, this picks up super well. But something more creamy like a metallic shade, this can struggle with a little bit. And that's where the E6 really shines. This picks up creamier formulas really nicely and places them very precisely on the lash line. And that's really where this brush shines. And I'm kind of sad that that isn't being highlighted in the product description, that it's not being um, described as such because that's really the only usage that I have for this brush. Now I do like it for that. I do like being able to line um, particularly like my middle lower lash line with a really bright, um, very metallic shade. It just puts a really nice glimmer at the bottom of my eye line and it looks very beautiful. And I really struggled to do that with the 08 brush. So I'm happy I have the E6 brush for that, but it took a lot of trial and error to figure that out. And I did not enjoy that trial and error. And honestly, if I had if I had bought this individually and not as a set, I would have returned this after the first use. I would not have tried to figure out how to use this simply because my, um, my eyeline is very sensitive. My, my skin in general is very sensitive and I did not enjoy figuring out how to use this. I would have very much preferred that being described to me in the description or in some kind of tutorial. Um, instead of me having to figure that out on my own because that was painful. So I have very mixed feelings about this brush. I do think that it's a great brush and I'm not going to declutter it. I, I like using it for um, those more creamy formulas. If I want to use that as a liner shade, it's, it's beautiful for that. Absolutely great for that. But using it for anything else is... Um, it's just not usable for me. It's, it's too, it's too pokey. And outside of lining my eyes with something that's a creamier shade, I'm absolutely always going to go for the 08 over the E6. So would I repurchase this? At this point, I probably would, but that's still, I, I'm still disappointed in this. I'm still disappointed in this. And I'm a little bit sad for people who purchase this thinking that they're going to get the updated version of the 08 and then they kind of get this instead. So I would really recommend that the product description be updated because otherwise people are going to end up buying something um, that's going to be very different than what their expectations are going to be. And like I said, this is a great brush. Um, I'm just, I'm just disappointed with the experience. And I'm also sad for this brush because it's going to receive a lot more hate than it really deserves. It is a good brush in its own right. It just has a very specific purpose and a very specific use. I think it's a little bit unfair to the customer to leave it to them to figure out how to use it. Especially when you're describing a brush that is very rough as silk like. So as you can tell, I still have very mixed opinions on this. So I'm going to leave it at that. But Overall, as a set, I'm super happy with this. I'm super happy with my decision to purchase the whole set. And I know I was kind of trying to answer this like while I was going through the individuals, but if I were to not have this set, if this were to go poof and um, I have all my money back, what would I actually invest in? Having all of the knowledge now, what would I go for? And I would definitely get the E2. I would actually probably get two E2s. Mm. I would get the E4. I use this so, so much. And it'd probably be smart to get two of them, but I kind of want to try other um, lay down or builder brushes. I don't think I would get the E5 simply because it's so similar to some of my other 
pencil brushes, but I think if you don't have a pencil brush that you like that is like this, I think it's a great brush. The E6, um, ooh, yeah, I would repurchase it. I do like it for its specific use case. I do like being able to pick up, um, and specifically I use this with the Pat McGrath Decadence palette. I think it's really great for those formulas, and I sometimes struggle to get a really small amount of those formulas out, and this brush is a, a great brush for solving that problem. It does a great job. So as mixed of feelings as I have on this brush, I would repurchase it. I do like the use case that I have for it. Now for the E3, I, I probably wouldn't get this. I probably wouldn't repurchase this. I would get two of the E2s. This is just a little bit too big for me. Not a bad brush. It's just not my, not my preference. I think it's just a little bit too big and it's just too dense. I think that's the biggest thing is it's never going to have enough squish to go comfortably in my crease. I think it's just, it's just too big and it's too firm and it's too dense for me. In the E1, I am so on the edge with this because it is a little bit too big. I vastly prefer using the Sony G's Arched Worker over this. But here's the thing, the Arched Worker is squirrel hair. And so I already need to have a layer of powder on my eyes in order to use that. This I don't have to worry about. So I think what what makes me hesitate is I wish that this brush was more like Sonia G's Arch Worker. I think what I would like to change about this brush is I wish that it wasn't so, um, wasn't quite so fat. I wish this was a little bit thinner. And I do wish that it had that arched ferrule. I think that that makes all the difference in Sonia's brush. And I think that that makes it much more usable for me. Now, here's the fun thing though. Aside from the ferrule change, what I am describing is the Refer 33. And I prefer the Wayne Goss E1 to the Refer 33 by a long shot. So I don't know if I actually like a thinner brush because I already have the thinner brush and I don't use it. So I'm on the edge on this one. If you have larger eyes than me, which is going to be most people, I think this is an excellent brush. And I think that it's great to use both as a lay down, like a very, um, I mean, a very light lay down of color, a very nice wash of color. And then you can also use this as a buffing brush. It has enough, enough strength and enough um, surface area to use as a buffing brush, kind of like um, Sonia G's Blender Pro. So it's a very versatile brush. I like it. I would probably end up getting this. Yeah, I would probably end up getting this. I'm not as excited about this particular brush as much as I am about um, these two though. These two are definitely the stars and this one is by far my favorite. So, and if you were wondering like out of all of these, what is the one that I would recommend? It would absolutely be the E2. This is fabulous. Um, I don't think that everyone's going to like this. I imagine some people won't appreciate this brush for the very reason that I like it. Um, but this is my favorite brush. And I think that out of the set, this is probably the most unique. And I just love this brush. I really need to get another one. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this was a good updated review and it gives you some things to think about if you were thinking about purchasing this set. Um, or if you were just interested in seeing an updated review. If I've left anything out or if you have any additional questions, please feel free to ask below. I am happy to answer any of your questions um, or, you know, make another video if I really left out a lot of stuff. Um, but if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next one. So bye for now.